Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am breaking down how I made my faux marble fireplace just in time for the holiday season. We live in a rental and I have always wanted a really cool fireplace, but the problem is that these are my inspiration. I have a mid-century natural vibe for my interior design style and my hope is that today I can inspire you to make your dream fireplace goals come true. My first step was to sketch out my design on pieces of MDF. I purchased two half inch thick pieces of MDF and one piece of three quarter inch thick MDF and one eighth inch thick piece of MDF as well. You will also need wood glue, metal 90 degree brackets, screws, and duct tape. Why MDF? Well, I wanted a very smooth surface to paint my faux marbling on. Plus, it's very inexpensive. I needed to make my fireplace as tall as possible. Most of these styles are over 45 inches tall and one piece of MDF is only three feet tall. So I brainstormed how best to utilize each piece of my MDF because I didn't want any of these seams to be visible. From my one three quarter inch piece, I cut the base of the front of the fireplace, which was 36 inches tall by 56 inches wide, cutting the fireplace opening out of the bottom and using some of the remainder pieces later on in the process. Then with one of my half inch pieces of MDF, I cut the raised curved parts of the front of the fireplace. I used my compass and eyeballed the sizes of my curves at first. My measurements are about three and a half inch width along the large border with a five inch radius of each curve on the inside. The smaller border on the mouth of the fireplace is three and a half inches thick as well with a three and a half inch radius for both of those curves. And I just used my little handy jigsaw for all of these cuts straight and curved. Now, if I had just glued these pieces to the thick base front piece of the fireplace, it would only be three feet tall. So I elected to add leftover pieces of the half inch MDF like this to add some height. I only had to add height to the large border arched piece and not the mouthpiece of the fireplace. This adds an extra almost three and a half inches to mine. Once it's all glued together, wood filled and sanded, you don't even notice that these are sort of puzzle pieced in to make the fireplace appear taller. I then added leftover pieces of the three quarter inch MDF to the back of this front piece to fill it in, leaving in some room for the top of the fireplace to rest in, providing support for the top all the way across. With my second piece of half inch thick MDF, I cut the top at 11 and 3 quarter inches wide by 56 inches long and the two sides at 11 inches deep and 39 and 3 quarter inches tall. I fastened it all together using leftover MDF to brace the inside along with these 90 degree metal brackets that I screwed in. If you plan on having many heavy items sitting on your fireplace, I recommend adding even more supports than I did. Here, I would like to note that if you have the right tools, I would elect to miter all of these corners instead for the best finish. However, if you're anything like me with just a little jigsaw, assembling like I did using wood filler or caulk to fill in any cracks works absolutely fine. Now with the base constructed, I caulked any seams, sanded, and primed my piece to paint. Finally, I constructed the inside of my fireplace with my 8 inch thick MDF board by cutting a back panel and two side panels that I taped together to work much like a good old fashioned science fair bifolding board. With leftover pieces of this 8 inch thick MDF, I cut out a long base for the entire fireplace to sit on. I had to fill in toward the back and inside with scrap pieces as well, but once it's all painted, you can't even tell. The next step is my favorite, but I recognize not everyone will feel confident in painting their own marble. It would also be super fun and easy to find a pretty marble contact paper on Amazon and cover your fireplace with that. I had a super specific look in mind, so I elected to use some brown, black, and white acrylic paint that I had on hand, and I copied some pictures to get started with my marble pattern. I would always recommend at least starting with a photograph of your favorite marble to help inspire you when you begin painting. I start with a light version of the color I will be using to paint the most prominent movements and veins first. 
Then I go in and darken these places. Something that I found that is really important is to make many extremely faint veins beyond your most obvious ones because that is what real marble has and it could easily be overlooked in the painting process. I have seen many people use feathers to get nice fine lines, but I just use my little paintbrush for everything. I also found that watering down my brush from time to time to get a little more flow to the paint is really helpful. I would also use a paper towel to clean up any mistakes and sometimes even add some shading to my veins. Put on a good podcast, a movie, or your favorite music and have fun with this process. Now just remember that it's just paint. If you hate it, just paint over it and try again. Now with all of the marbling finished, I needed to move on to the inside of my fireplace and these tiles in this fireplace are my inspiration. I used a larger brush with my white, brown, and black paint to mimic the natural variation of the handmade tiles I wanted this to look like. Once I had painted the tiles, I went over with a gloss sealer and then painted the grout lines with a matte white paint and a bit of baking soda mixed in for a chalky grout light texture. Now it looks very realistic in real life, but I do have another option for those who want an even more realistic hack. You can actually find peel and stick tiles that you can order on Amazon that have this look. I love them so much that I even might order them down the road and try them myself. Once you finish painting everything, I recommend sealing everything with a clear sealer, which of course I forgot to do before I started decorating for Christmas. First, I got a taller art piece to go on top of my mantle, and then I used command strips to hang two of these Norfolk garlands that I got from Kirkland's. I love these, and I got them this summer for $25 each, so definitely look out for their sales. Then I forged some sticks and pine twigs from our trees outside to give this some more body, especially on the side here. Using real greenery, always make sure to soak it for 24 hours before and then spray it with water every day to keep it alive for longer. I added twinkle lights that I found for $5 each for a touch of magic and then I decided to add some black ribbon to the side to balance the black from my new art piece that's on top of my mantle. It also adds some volume and drama so I 1000% recommend using ribbons on your Christmas mantles. I decided to roll over our Christmas oars on the side because our tree is starting to gather some presents and I really love how this ended up. With the flickering battery powered candles that I got from Amazon, this is really the CB2 Christmas fireplace vibe I was going for. But what do you think? Do you see the vibe? Did I pull it off? Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you are wondering, I do have some stockings that I will be adding for Christmas, but right now I just want to enjoy it the way it is, and I encourage everyone who's decorating to enjoy the stages of creating. In the long run, I'm also considering adding reading either behind my fireplace to extend my profile like you see here, or to the fireplace front itself like I had in my original sketches. Now I'm still on the hunt for some CB2 European mid-century style sconces to go on either side of the fireplace. Some of my favorites come from this amazing company called The Lifestyle Co, which is on YouTube and I cannot recommend their channel enough. I'm completely obsessed with their company. That's it for my DIY Christmas fireplace and mantle decor. Hopefully you have a really handy person in your life who can even improve upon my plans. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more of my content, including a DIY gift video that will focus on DIY gifts that you will actually be excited to give. Thanks again, happy holidays, and happy crafting.